Find out how New York City plans to bring vaccination sites closer to students. How the United States is reuniting international families once again. And why a bus crash stopped traffic on the SUNY Oswego campus this afternoon. WTOP 1090 News starts now. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Ben Kinney. And I'm Clarissa Karkey. The afternoon commute for many students at SUNY Oswego was interrupted after a bus crash on campus. Around 2 o'clock this afternoon, a student's vehicle and a Lakeside Commons bus collided near the corner of Onondaga and Cayuga Circle by Seneca Hall. University police quickly arrived at the scene and the road was reduced down to one lane of traffic. Neither the student drivers or any of the bus passengers were injured, but both vehicles had substantial damage. The bus was not running after the hit and was not towed away from the scene until hours later. The university police's investigation of the crash is still ongoing. SUNY Oswego conducted workshops and events to celebrate the National First Generation College Student Day. This day is dedicated to students who are the first in their families to attend colleges. The event included panel discussions from first-generation Oswego alumni, faculty, and the staff. Organizers also gave out stickers, cookies, and scholarship information to other first-generation students in the Murano Campus Center Auditorium. A popular Oswego bar is changing their ID policy following a crackdown on underage bargoers. Oswego City Police officers performed an ID check at Alley Cats Bar on West Bridge Street around 10.30 Friday evening. Officers found multiple individuals with fake ID cards. Over 100 tickets were issued as a result. Alley Cats management declined to speak with us, but did release a statement saying in part that the bar will only be accepting New York State IDs as a result. Multiple Ivy League colleges had to make emergency evacuation after receiving multiple bomb threats. Cornell, Columbia, Yale, and Brown University each received multiple bomb threats that were later discovered to have no credibility by the university police. These threats come after similar false threats that were reported at Ohio University and Miami University. The Yale student newspaper reported that around 40 bombs had been discovered on their campus, and police investigations are still underway. New York State announced they will be closing six prisons this spring. Closure of the six facilities, which include the Ogdensburg Correctional Facility in St. Lawrence County and the Rochester Correctional Facility in Monroe County, is expected to save the state around $142 million. The New York State Department of Corrections says the prisons are being closed due to low inmate populations and no layoffs will result from the closure. The U.S. is easing travel restrictions for most international travelers starting today. The move will allow air travel for visitors from Mexico, Canada and parts of Europe. Jen Sullivan has more information about the requirements for travelers and the impact reopening will have on the economy. Thank you for having us, America. Bye! Welcome to America. The U.S. is accepting fully vaccinated foreign travelers at airports and land borders after 20 long months. This is absolutely one of the key parts of the recovery is restarting the international travel system on which so many of our members depend. The American Society of Travel Advisors praising the move. International air travelers must have a proof of COVID-19 vaccination and a negative test. Land travelers also required to show proof of vaccination, but no test. We understand there's going to be some complexities in implementing this. This is a brand new system. Uh, in terms of verifying vaccination, uh, testing requirements, etc. The airline industry expecting a major boost. On Monday, 253 international flights were scheduled to arrive at Newark Liberty and John F. Kennedy International Airports. That's up 11 percent over a similar day in October, according to the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Yeah, first time back since pre-pandemic. Tourism and hospitality leaders predicting the move will supercharge their industries as they struggle to recover from coronavirus-related closures. Restoring uh, links with the UK, with EU, with Canada, it's pretty much the most important thing that we can do in terms of helping their business. The National Retail Federation says U.S. retailers are hoping the return of international travelers may lead to a new wave of spenders and generate more sales as the holiday season quickly approaches. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 
The U.S. also opened the border to Canadian visitors traveling by land months after Canadian officials allowed Americans to travel to Canada. Oswego Health will be receiving $500,000 from Oswego County to help with recruitment and retention efforts of medical workers. The funding, which comes from Oswego County's cut of the American Rescue Plan, comes at a time when Oswego Health is facing a shortage of medical personnel while COVID cases continue to surge in the county. Oswego Health is the largest health care provider in Oswego County and operates Oswego Hospital in the city of Oswego and two urgent care centers in Fulton and Central Square. New York City has begun opening vaccination sites at schools for students aged 5 through 11. According to the city officials, the vaccines are free of cost and do not require prior appointment. However, all children must have verbal consent from a parent or guardian to be vaccinated. If the parent or guardian cannot accompany the student, the student must be escorted by another adult who must connect the parents over the phone to give verbal consent at the time of vaccine. Election Day may have been last week, but next year's midterm race has already begun in central New York. Congressman John Katko, who represents New York's 24th district, is being challenged in the GOP primary by Tim Coe, a DeWitt Republican, who's announcing his campaign tomorrow. Coe says he plans to appeal to Trump supporters who have lost faith in Katko in recent years. Congressman Katko was a vocal critic of former President Trump and voted to impeach him earlier this year. Coming up later tonight, one CEO sold billions of dollars in stock after asking Twitter for advice. And we have the latest updates from the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Now let's take a look at the weather with Storm Team 10 meteorologist Shelby Peplowski. Shelby, it was a great day out there. How is it right now? Right now, temperatures are in the low 50s and that wind chill is making it feel a little bit, a little bit chillier than normal. Um, I'll have more for my full weather after the break.